Number one, the unit for capacitance is the farad. The farad can also be written as. So we have the formula Q equals to CV, where Q is the charge, C is the capacitance, and V is the voltage or potential difference. So we can rearrange it to write Q by V. Q by V, from Q by V, we know that Q equals to IT, so here will be IT by V. This I will be ampere, this time will be seconds, volts, voltage will be volts, ampere second volts. So this answer is matching with A. Number two, which graph shows how the electric field strength E due to a negative point charge varies with distance R from the charge? So the most probable answer would be this B since as E is inversely proportional to the R square but this is not the answer since it says that this is a negative point charge. This would have been the answer if it was E equals to KQ by R square. But this Q is negative. So for negative charge this would be minus KQ by R square. So a graph for E equals to minus 1 by r square would be d. So the answer is d. Number 3. The diagram shows a coin on a horizontal surface which is rotating at a constant angular velocity omega. Which arrow currently shows the direction of the frictional force on the coin? So the direction of the frictional force will be d since um, it is pointing towards the center of motion. The center of motion is this. So the direction of the centripetal force of, of the motion will be the same as the centripetal force. So the answer will be D. Number four. Two charges plus Q and minus Q are located as shown on the diagram. X is the point halfway between the two charges. So point X is this. A small positive charge moves from plus Q to minus Q. Which of the statement above the resultant force of this charge as it passes through X is correct? So we have a plus charge and a minus charge. The electric fields will look like this. But when we are in the halfway between the plus and minus, the electric field at here will be zero. The force acting should have been zero. The answer should have been D, but it is not the answer since it is talking about a positive charge. Even if it is between the two charges, the electric field at point X is zero as it is equidistant. But force on the particle is not zero, since the particle itself is charged. So there will be some force acting on the particle. If the particle wasn't charged, then the force acting would have been zero. So the answer is not D. The answer is B. Some force is acting on it due to it being charged. Number five. Two parallel plates have a potential difference of 12 volts across them and are separated by a distance of 5 into 10 to the power 4 meter. What is the magnitude of the electric field strength halfway between the plates? So the scenario is like this. We have two plates. One side is positive, the other side is negative. The potential difference is 12 and the distance is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter. The field lines will be like this. They should be equidistant and the arrow will have to be from the positive to the negative. So the magnitude of electric field is E equals to V by D. V is 12, D is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4, which would give 24,000 volts per meter. And the answer is C. Now, the fact that the question asks for halfway is quite irrelevant since the electric field at every point, every point between the plates is equal. So the question to find the field strength in the halfway is irrelevant here in this question. Number six. The Large Hadron Collider is designed to accelerate protons to a very high energies. For particle physics experiments, a very high energies are used to annihilate hadrons, no, collide hadrons, no, create particles with large mass, right. So this has an explanation which is when we are colliding, the particles will be in opposite directions. So we can assume that it has a mass m with v velocity, and the other particle will have mass m but minus v since the, it is traveling at the opposite direction. So that sum of momentum before collision will be equal to zero, 
since momentum has to be conserved, the sum of momentum after collision will also be close to zero. So to conserve the energy, the total energy, initially it has kinetic energy. But afterwards, since it has zero momentum after, the kinetic energy will not come into play since it won't have the speed since they are colliding. So the equation E equals to mc square will come into play. That amount of energy with which the particles are colliding will be converted into mass. So this is the correct answer. They are creating particles with larger mass. Number seven. An electron has momentum of 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 24 kg meter per second. The kinetic energy of the electron. So we know that this is an electron. We know the kinetic energy. We know the numerical value for momentum. So we know the formula in the physics book. There is a formula which is K equals to P square by 2m. P is the momentum, m is the mass of the electron and K is the kinetic energy of the electron. So K would be P square, P is 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 4 square divided by 2 into m. We do not have the value of m here but the value of the mass of electron will be given at the end of the question paper which is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31. So the final k value for this answer will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules. So the answer is b. Number 8. A particle of mass m and charge q moves in a circle perpendicular to the magnetic field of a magnetic flux density b. The graph shows a relationship between radius of the orbit and velocity of the particle. The gradient of the graph is given by. So we are dealing with a gradient here. So gradient is actually equals to, this gradient is equals to rise by run or change in y by change in x, right? So change in y or rise is the radius and v is the run change in x. So the charged particle is being accelerated by the magnetic field to rotate it in a circular motion. So this means we have to equate pqv equals to mv square by r. Here we have to find the gradient. So we have to find r by v. So rearranging it pq equals to mv by r. So r by v would be m by bq. This is the gradient. So the value for the gradient will be equal to this m by bq. So a, a is the correct answer. Question 9. Which of the following is a valid conclusion from the information given? So two particles x and y were created by the decay of a lambda particle at O. The diagram shows the tracks of particle x and y. So x is a negative charged particle, y is a positively charged particle. Lambda particle is neutral, right? C is the answer since a particle cannot be positive or negative for any type of charge when it is decaying. During the decay, a particle has to have a neutral charge. D is not the answer since sufficient information is not given. So the answer is C. Number 10. Which of the following is the correct statement about momentum? A. The momentum of x is equal to that of y. So this is not necessarily the correct answer since they might have different masses and if they have different mass, their momentum would be different since momentum equals to mass into velocity. Not B, the total momentum of the system is zero. This might not also be the answer since we do not know if the particle had or hadn't have any speed before the decay. So if the particle did not have any velocity in the beginning of the decay, then this means that it had zero momentum. The total momentum of the system would also be zero. So that scenario is not given in the question. Number C, the vector sum of the momenta of x and y must be equal to that of the lambda particle. C is the correct answer since always during calculation and everything, we take the vertical and horizontal component of the momentum and the initial sum value and the final sum value must be equal to conserve the law of momentum. So the answer is C. The main thing here is to consider the components, the horizontal and vertical components of the momentum. D is not the answer since we do not know if the initial momentum before collision was actually zero. The lambda particle could be moving before the collision took place.